affairs subscribe to our youtube channel click the bell icon for updates this is strat news global i'm amita bravi and you're watching our tuesday to thursday flagship show the gist it's a pleasure to welcome from lagos a writer and journalist Torimo Salao. We're looking at uh, the latest issues there which, with Twitter, which has been banned by the government and uh, the effect and ramifications. Ms. Salao, thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us on Strat News in India. Yeah, thanks for having me. Just if you can, uh, I've read up a little bit of what's happening uh, in the last week or so, but if you could briefly just tell some of our viewers who don't know why uh, this ban has happened, if you can uh, lead us through the events of the last week, Ms. Alao. Yeah, so um, the social media platform Twitter was uh, banned in Nigeria about three, four days ago by the president because uh, a couple of his tweets were um, deleted. So, um, and uh, that resulted in um, the block of access to social media platform to Twitter in Nigeria. Right, uh, we are seeing that tweet which was removed. Two days later, the ban came into place, the suspension. Now, the government is uh, and the presidency is giving very different uh, reasons for uh, uh, corporate governance. I mean, the statement that the presidency issued uh, says it's got nothing to do with uh, the president's tweet being removed. Um, yeah, that's um, the notion they want us to believe, but um, what the general consensus is, is that based on the delete, um, deleting of that tweet, which um, Twitter felt violated um, some of its um, um, policy, um, the access was denied and uh, the platform was banned. So, of course, the government will have us believe otherwise, but majority know that it was because of that uh, tweets that was deleted. We're just taking uh, our viewers through some of the events that happened uh, before and after the suspension. This is the, the statement from the presidency. There's been a litany of problems on the social media site. Uh, in the US, the EU, Canada, several other embassies have also uh, reacted. But from outside, when I look at Twitter handles, uh, Nisalao that are uh, working from Nigeria itself, there is a lot of pushback. People, uh, despite the warning from the government that there could be criminal action, are still tweeting. Yeah, because um, it's a it's a very popular um, social media platform in Nigeria. You know, it has given many people a voice, and it has you know created um, opportunity for people to um, share their views, to share their frustrations, to you know hear their thoughts. So um, banning Twitter is basically, um, you know, impeding on people's right to freedom of speech, which uh, many international organizations have cited as a violation of uh, um, human rights. And uh, people are really pushing hard and hoping that the government would um, rescind this decision and reconsider the ban. Right, uh, but uh, post the ban, the government and its departments have also threatened people uh, with action and uh, asked communication uh, companies to take down Twitter. Are people not scared of that? I mean, I asked you this over the last day or so, whether it's okay for you. Uh, people Are people worried about what action the government can take? Yeah, of course, there have been some threats um, to, you know, arrest people who continue to bypass the ban. And also the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, has also, you know, ordered all broadcasting stations in the country, that's TV and radio stations, to stop um, broadcast of their, you know, content by Twitter, which a lot of, a number of them have, you know, had to, like, comply and suspended um, transmission of broadcast by Twitter. But still, um, the people, you know, it's the voice of the people, and the people are saying no, that you cannot, you know, ban Twitter. Yeah. 
We, uh, some of our viewers are saying uh, good evening to you and uh, saying that this is a very topical discussion on Twitter because there's a debate in India as well. There are the rules uh, that the government has put out for social media sites. But uh, when you talk about uh, the government warning against criminal action, there's a hashtag that's trending, keep it on, uh, yeah. uh, in, uh, Ni in Nigeria as well. What action can uh, the government take against individuals if they continue tweeting? I'm seeing all government handles haven't done so post uh, the fourth. Even football teams are not doing that. The official handles. Well, honestly, I, I don't know what action the government is going to take against over 40 million people that are, or less that are probably still tweeting. I really can't say. But of course, for corporate organizations, they will be easy to single out, knowing that um, the government has you know, said no to uh, access to Twitter. So for, for private individuals, it may be a bit more, you know, harder for government to, of course, arrest over 80 million people that are on Twitter. So, yeah. Right. Uh, Mr. Lau, there's another part of the debate, like it's uh, another issue, I think, that it's not the same issue in Nigeria and in India. But like I said, uh, there are laws here which there is a lot of uh, pushback from these international uh, big tech giants. There is a view that if uh, the government or there are national laws that are put in place, that big tech, uh, whether it's international or not, should follow national laws. Do you see a difference between that and why this Twitter ban has been imposed in Nigeria? Um, yeah, so in, li um, in light of the recent development, as you know, said that they want Twitter to act responsibly and probably follow a couple of you know rules. It is still a um, conversation that is still ongoing. But it's um it's like saying you are trying to uh, how will I put it gauge the way Twitter um, is um, used or the kind of information that people can tweet. You know, it's like putting down regulations and rules for people to express themselves. So it's, um, people are not embracing that um, option. They are not open to the idea of having their conversations controlled, surveyed, or, you know, um, having to follow rules and regulations before they can tweet certain things. So it's, it's still an ongoing conversation and uh, I really cannot see what the outcome will be yet. Sure. Uh, there is, of course, a great difference from uh, what, uh, say, Twitter and Facebook did for then President Trump as well when uh, they first uh, suspended him and then took him off. Uh, what's happened here in Nigeria is that the government is trying to regulate all conversations on Twitter. It's, it's not they're reacting to the president's tweet being removed and saying that nobody should have any kind of conversation. Now, there are lots of conversations that go on on uh, media like Twitter, like you're saying it's freedom of expression, political news uh, that uh, people in Nigeria, like elsewhere, are also depending on Twitter for, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, um, everybody is quite aware of what happened when um, you know, former President Trump was, you know, taking off Twitter. And uh, it's a bit surprised that this is happening in Nigeria because, I mean, the president's account wasn't suspended. But, I mean, we have this, you know, reaction and it's, uh, it's a bit jarring. And people, you know, it leaves speculations of, you know, what could possibly happen next. Imagine if his account was deleted. I mean, what would, you know, have been the resultant uh, action? So it's, it's really hard to make, uh, to draw parallels because, you know, it's, yeah, two basic different situations right now. Right. Uh, one of our regular viewers, Ma Tara, I think she is in the UK, asked this question of you, Ms. Salao. Uh, does Nigeria have robust laws regarding big social media companies? Um, so I really can't say regarding laws regarding social media. Right now, of course, it has been in, in the works to create a social media bill, which um, a lot of people are aware that bill is going to, you know, heavily regulate the use of social media and restrict the um, control and probably restrict the activities and the, the freedom that people have, especially the freedom that people have. It's going to do that. So, that. 
So, um, and people have been fighting against it. People have been really pushing back against it because such a bill is, is really going to affect a lot of people. And uh, it's not yet in, uh, it has not yet been fully um, signed into law yet. And we are hoping it's going to. Sure. Uh, and just putting up comments there by Matara and uh, uh, Shitej, who uh, I think we are, they are looking at uh, the Indian context and saying that uh, Twitter enjoys meddling in countries that are embroiled in internal issues. This is a striking pattern as to how to stir the hornet's nest. Negative publicity helps as well. Uh, what is the view of uh, Twitter in uh, Nigeria? I mean, is that the case or here it seems to be that the anger is all uh, you know, pointed at or focused on the government for doing uh, w what they're doing in Nigeria? Um, so basically from um, what we've gathered from Twitter, it was the tweets that was deleted was a violation of its policy and uh, you know, Twitter has a right to what its policy will be and you know, any violation of it of course uh, leads to such actions being taken. So I think it's basically, you know, understanding both parties and how to balance it on both sides. So, yeah, and I, I really okay. cannot say if they are trying to interfere, meddle with internal affairs, but I feel, you know, once you have a platform and there are certain things you can't do on it, then it has to take, you know, there will be some consequential actions to it. So, uh, Mata Tara, thanks you for your answer. I think it was uh, for the uh, last answer. Sai Prasad says banning is not the solution. Resolving is important. I just wanted you to explain again, Mr. Lao, how important Twitter is for normal folk in uh, Nigeria because it's not just freedom of expression looking for uh, actual news when there's so much fake news around there and maybe they're not uh, satisfied with mainstream media as well. But small businesses and uh, there is a lot of economy that's uh, dependent on uh, Twitter. Is that a correct assessment, Ms. Allah? Yeah, of course. Uh, Twitter is, uh, is, you know, it's a major platform and a lot of small businesses have you know, started off based up on Twitter and they've grown to be, you know, what they had today. And a lot of people's livelihood is heavily dependent on Twitter, people who, you know, um, probably their job description is, you know, uh, tied directly to the platform. So, of course, it's going to affect a lot of people and, you know, revenue, you know, has been recorded that has dropped over the last couple of days since the ban. You know, businesses have had to, like, you know, cut off Twitter right now for, you know, communication purposes and other things that they probably will use the platform to do. So yeah, it's affecting a lot of people and people are hoping that this ban will be, you know, um, this ban will end soon. Uh, the actual post from the president was about uh, the Biafra secessionism which led to the civil war, what, 30, 40 years ago and there was a warning there to uh, secessionists, I think, and violence or attacks on infrastructure in the so southern part of the country and that was what was uh, removed from uh, Twitter. But uh, when you look at uh, big tech in Africa as a, as a whole, whether it's Twitter, it's Facebook, uh, other microblogging sites, Twitter itself set up its uh, headquarters in Accra and Ghana. Uh, is, why did it not do that in the most populous and uh, the biggest economy that is yours, Nigeria? Um, so, yeah, um, Chita set up his office in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah, um, well, from Twitter and based on the, you know, um, reason they gave, they said Ghana is a promoter of um, free speech, you know, and um, that was the reason they gave. And also looking at the situation of this right now, everybody will, you know, agree with Twitter's decision to probably set up office in um, Ghana because Right now, the environment is quite hostile to, you know, uh, the operation. And um, considering this event that's taking place, you know, it's it will stifle. It will definitely stifle their work if they were actually domiciled there. So, well, a lot of people will say probably Peter's decision to move to Ghana was probably the right. 
A question from one of our viewers, Anil Maske, who asks you, uh, Turin Mosalao, is there any discussion on these kind of issues in the African Union? In the future, can organized responses by the African Union, may, may, can they help to address the, the complicated issue of uh, data giants like Twitter? Well, I hope that, yeah, the African Union can actually step in and, you know, sort of try to mediate this issue and, uh, you know, lay out some clarifications to guide against future occurrences like this. I really cannot say much on that end, but hopefully maybe there's something they can do to, you know, help the situation, not just for Twitter, but for also other social media platforms and, you know, um, with other countries in other, other parts of Africa. Uh, probably may have this issue in one way or the other with the big tech companies. Tarino uh, Salao, uh, again, Hrithik Dosanj is trying to understand uh, the issue. Is it only a matter of what's happening with Twitter of free speech or is there national security as well up to a certain extent is what uh, Hrithik is asking? Um, so, aside from free speech, um, the reason given by the government for banning Twitter is because they said it's, um, it poses a threat to its corporate existence and uh, they believe that, you know, the platform is um, encouraging people to probably engage in activities that may be inciting division or, you know, violence. So, it's, um, there are concerns everywhere and I really cannot, you know, say it's okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, the larger issue which you have addressed in your recent uh, writing as well, which is uh, uh, big tech, of course, wants revenue, is looking towards the African continent, which has a lot of youth who are already using it or want to use it. It wants to bring up its, uh, its numbers. Does Twitter and other uh, sites like that or microblogging sites like that, YouTube, uh, <laughs> Facebook, do they just follow what the government does because of money? Um, so yeah, of course, we understand that these companies are, you know, business driven and, um, you know, they are how to you know, make money and also you know, contribute significantly also to, to the continent. Um, they will try their very best to, you know, be in the good graces of the government and see where they can, you know, probably find a balance or, you know, draw meat at the middle. I guess that's just what I can say. Mm. Because, you know, Twitter would definitely want to still, you know, continue its business operations in Nigeria. Definitely, it, it has a very huge fan base here and people would not want to see it leave. So it's about, you know, both parties coming to the table and, you know, agreeing on, you know, the way forward. And uh, if you could give us a little bit more of context and history in terms of President Burhari. Now, he, he was a dictator before uh, Nigeria became a democracy. Uh, he's, he's, he's now the president. Didn't he and the government and politicians use uh, sites like Twitter a lot when they were, say, campaigning? So are there double standards here is my question. Yeah, he was a military um, general before he became you know, a civilian president. Let me put it that way. So yeah, of course, they used the Twitter platform heavily to you know, drive their campaign. That is where they uh, used, that is where they you know, were able to reach out to a large demographic, which is, you know, probably the largest demographic, the youth population in Nigeria. And um, it's unfortunate that this is happening now that, you know, the same platform that they wrote to get into office, now they want to like, you know, um, take access away from people. And um, it's, it's, it's an unraveling situation and people are just, you know, you know, waiting to see how the whole thing plays out because we it, it's hard to imagine that this platform brought you into office, now you want to uh, There's some mainstream media which seems to suggest that uh, he was extremely angry and it's actually a, que uh, a question of ego or not national security. 
uh, that because his post was taken down, he's taken this action. He's not uh, maybe taken advice from uh, his uh, closest cabinet colleagues, etc. Uh, how do you see uh, authoritarianism and the streak which is being reported on uh, uh, President uh, of President Burhari working in this uh, particular case when uh, big tech is also involved? And is it you know falling? to uh, what the government's diktat is, even if it's authoritarian? Uh, so I feel that, yeah, it's, um, it, it reeks of authoritarianism. And um, we are hoping that it doesn't come down to that, actually, that you know, things, you know, will get, um, things will be better, you know, improved. But as it is right now, People can just hope that, you know, this doesn't continue and that the government doesn't, you know, start using these platforms that uh, as tools to, uh, to control the people and to control the actors that people have. So, yeah. Uh, just an observation by Anil Maske who says, it seems that the whole issue of digital development and legal development are in contradiction. Can we say that the actions of uh, citizens may mobilize changes in the political system of uh, Nigeria? Do you, you think uh, pressure can work? Yeah, of course, I believe pressure can work. I believe that it's not up to the people to stand up for what they want. And, you know, it's not going to be easy. It has not always been easy, but we cannot afford to give up because when we give up, we win. And uh, we are all we got. Honestly, there is nobody that is coming to save us. That's just the situation right now. Uh, Matara commenting that uh, Nigeria is the biggest democracy and the richest country in Africa should play a leadership uh, role in the continent. But an interesting development I saw, I'm not sure how widespread or big it is, but there seem to be some local groups which are trying to set up uh, some kind of alternative to Twitter in, uh, in Nigeria. And why I'm saying that is because there is uh, such an app in India as well, Ku, uh, which looks at itself as an alternative to uh, Twitter with, with no uh, international big tech background uh, following Indian laws. And what's interesting is, I don't know whether you heard of it, uh, Tarinmo, but Ku uh, said yesterday or day before that it's also uh, set up its platform in Nigeria and some people are actually using that. Um, yeah, I probably have heard of something like that, but a lot of people are not going with that option because um, why would they want to? Why would they want to leave Twitter for that for that platform? I mean, Twitter gives people everything they want, so why go for another alternative? And of course, the platform was created in a way to you know push Twitter out of the picture, so so that you know when Twitter is not you know, in operation, then they can, you know, say, okay, this is the Twitter for Nigeria now. But it, no, that's not going to work. Who will not definitely buy that? Yeah. Uh, earlier in this discussion, so, you yeah. did uh, tell us your thoughts about the African Union and uh, big data companies. Uh, interesting point that is being brought up here by uh, NHR Dave. Can you tell us uh, what the Chinese political influence on the government is? Uh, because there, there is a lot of talk that they are looking for, you know, firewalls like the Chinese do in terms of uh, banning Twitter, though their own diplomats use it. But uh, what is uh, the Chinese influence on the government in Nigeria? Yeah, so regarding the Chinese influence on the government of Nigeria, I really do not know a lot or the extent to which the influence of the Chinese is. Well, I know that they, you know, they are, they are partners with you know, Nigeria. They give us loan, yeah. They support us uh, fiscally and financially as well. So, so, yeah, of course, this, you know, people have been saying this, you know, looks a bit like, you know, what the Chinese influence will be like, and um, a lot of people are not buying it because we do not believe in such, you know, idea. And we are hoping that um, the Chinese influence will be a positive influence, not an influence that is detrimental to Nigeria. Right, uh, some of our viewers saying use uh, coup, uh, 
Haiku interface. Sai Prasad says there's a lot of homework uh, required. It's not user friendly. And uh, Anil Maske uh, thanks you for that answer that you you gave to his uh, question as well. Rinma Salau, thank you so much uh, for sharing your experiences and letting us know what really is happening in in Nigeria from uh, your point of view. And we really do hope that, uh, like I asked you even all through yesterday, you don't get in trouble uh, in internally because of us talking about uh, the Twitter ban. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. It is our pleasure, Tarima Salao, a Lagos-based writer and journalist talking about the Twitter ban by the government. And you can support our kind of journalism. Do go onto our website, uh, the link for any kind of financial support that you would like to give us to continue our work like this is most welcome. Do also follow us on our social media handles on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And click on that bell icon on our YouTube channel so that you get notified when we put up videos like this one. Do also subscribe and increase our followers on YouTube. This is the gist on Strat News Global. I'm Amit Abrevi.